Hey, good morning, everybody. It's now, um, it's Thursday morning. It is December 21st, and we are in my home, because today's actually a day off, or a day of not going into D.C. Um, so I just want to talk to you guys about um, a couple of things you guys have been responding, kind of amazingly, actually. Um, you guys, I showed you this list. Here's all the scratching as I had to do on it as I went through your comments yesterday. So there's, it's funny, I think I doubled the number of things on my list based on what you guys have responded with. So um, your response from out there has been um, truly inspiring to me. Um, it's incredibly meaningful to me that you all choose to, I don't know, to participate, to talk back. Um, that some of this is really landing for you is, is truly meaningful to me. So thank you for that. So we're sitting in my kitchen. I'm actually at my kitchen table today. It is 5.15. Um, and so part of what I wanted to talk to you about this morning was it's it's my day off. You know, I'm not even really sure what that means in my life. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Because some of you actually commented about a couple of things I said yesterday. Um, but you see, um, let's see. Um, that's, that's my cuckoo cock. We bought that in, uh, in Bavaria. I brought it home a few years ago. There's my tree. It's a it's a 16 footer if you can believe it. It's a uh, it's fake. Uh, we've been using it every year for. We've been in this house as our 22nd Christmas here. We've used it for 20 of them, um, and my kids are very opposed to us going out and cutting a tree down. So we've been using that same tree since my uh, since before my son was born. So let's see. It's 5:15. I'm up, showered, dressed. My bed's made for all you smart asses out there. Um, and today is a, today's exciting. We're actually have some car material later today. The Camaro came in. I'm going down to Richmond. It's about a three hour drive. So I'll be taking my trailer down. So you'll see some F-350. You'll see some racing trailer. You'll see the Camaro, the ZL1 1LE is actually in. Um, they had to ship it down special. We can talk about the shipping of it later. We'll do the car stuff later. Um, but, but there were a couple of themes that I wanted to, to get to today based on what you were asking. One is, what motivates me? What keeps me motivated? And then, why did I choose to start this channel? And then, a really good one came in yesterday about how do I balance it all? What's, um, how do you get it all done? When you ask, you ask a question about my wife. Um, so I talked to Anne Marie last night and it was pretty funny. She, I said, Hey, some folks are asking about, you know, what's your wife like? What's the point of view of, of Anne Marie on with somebody that's this busy, this driven. And she was, she gave me the old NFW. She's not, she has no interest in coming onto the channel or talking. It's just not her thing. So that'll be a pretty hardcore boundary. I doubt, I doubt you'll meet Anne Marie, uh, like sitting here and talking to you. Um, it's just, not who she is and um, I've been with her 30 years and I've learned that um, when you hit her core you back off where you you're the one that gets hurt so I like that about her and that's that's one that's one rule she has she just isn't gonna come on so I'll tell you a bit of a funny story I know some of you starting to think maybe I'm pretty smart so I just want to tell you the level of stupidity that's in this head so it's Christmas time there's the tree it's Christmas time, and so buying the wife a present. And so for the first time in several years, she actually expressed a need or a want, which I have not heard in a long time. And she wanted a Peloton, the new bike. If, if, you, if you're in the U.S. You, and you watch TV ever, you see Peloton ads. And she really wanted one, so I bought my wife an exercise bike for Christmas. That's a level of stupidity I can't even explain. But it's what she wanted. But for those of you starting out in a relationship, don't buy exercise equipment for your wife or your girlfriend. Don't do that. It's a bad idea. In fact, the rule in our family, and the family I married into was, men should not buy anything that plugs in as a Christmas gift or an anniversary gift or a birthday gift. Don't do it. 30 years in, you can do what they ask you to do. But don't buy anything that plugs in for a gift. So the three topics that we wanted to talk about are what motivates me, 
And, and one thing I want to talk about there is if, if you need a lot of motivation, you're probably thinking about the wrong things. You're probably trying to do the wrong things. If you're constantly needing to be motivated, it might mean you're not listening. And for me, so this is going to get a little weird, so let's just say it straight out. But <clears throat> to me, motivated means or is equivalent to being connected. And connected means I'm listening to the world, I'm listening to the universe, I'm listening to God, whatever you call it, I believe we're all connected together. And if we are quiet and grateful and listening, and I don't mean with your ears, I just mean listening, paying attention, being sensitive, being aware, your mind will tell you things. Sometimes you can't stop it and it's full of crap, but if you quiet it down, that mind's, uh, that mind's eye or that voice inside your head will tell you things. You know the answers to everything already. You just have to listen, be quiet, be grateful, and let them come to you. Those flashes, what we call inspiration, really are the larger voice talking to us. But if we're noisy, if we always have headphones in, if we're always watching TV, if we're always watching YouTube, this channel's fine, it's helpful, but others might not be. But if you're tubing, if you're doing a lot of things, you're always, if you're never quiet, um, we get bored in our society very quickly. So if you're never quiet, you really can't hear the voice. And so one thing I would <clears throat> ask you to ponder is, <clears throat> are you listening? Are you connected? Are you following the voice inside your head? Because we know when we do something we're not supposed to do. We know when we don't do something we're supposed to do. We know it. We feel it. We already know it. So largely, if, as we go through the day, it's a question of, are we following what we know to be right? And if we are, I think motivation becomes less of a problem or less of a concern because we know we're following the right thing and our voice, that, that little voice in our head is telling us we're on the right track. <clears throat> Some more normal, uh, maybe normal behavior for, for most of us, for me, that motivates is a, fa is a, is a fear of failure. Um, I don't know where that came from. It's probably some childhood Freudian thing. I have no idea. But I have a fear of failure. I don't want to be viewed as one. I don't want to see it myself as one. I want to be a motivator to others. And so that just causes me to work. And, and, and work is a weird word, but, you know, strive, push, make things happen. Um, and if I run into an object, a, a hurdle, an obstacle, I just keep bashing away at it or jump over it or go around it. <clears throat> I just don't let things stop where I want to go. And so just to assess what's in front of you. If something's hard, really look at it and say, is there an easier way or what's it going to take? And are you willing to do what it takes? And that's what I think differentiates those who, who um, achieve and those who don't. Is we all run up against the same obstacles. And so what do you do with it? Um, most of us are born with nothing. Most of us are born with almost no advantage. Um, and so we kind of all come from the same place. So listen to your head. Evaluate what you're trying to do and are you connected to it. And are you willing to bash away at the, uh, <clears throat> uh, the obstacles that get thrown in your path as you go. Talk a little bit about, why did I start this channel? I started it really, I mean, f just to have some fun. Um, I've been watching YouTube for two years maybe now, and I like what I saw. Um, I, I just wanted to be out there and provide some content. <clears throat> I love what Casey Neistat does. I mean, who doesn't? <clears throat> and then I like the car channels I saw. I'm, I'm called to the cars, I enjoy them. I mean, they're just fun. There's no redeeming quality. I'm not trying to fool myself into there's some real redeeming value to a garage and a bunch of nice cars. Um, it's just fun, pure and simply. I think sometimes we have to say I'm doing this because it's fun. I don't need to try to justify it. I don't think you feel like you, you should feel like you have to justify everything you do. Sometimes it's just because it's fun. I wanted to create something that was positive. Even when I started posting on Facebook a couple years ago, I was trying to create a, a just a one stupid place where people, went, if they hit me or came to me, they actually found something fun or pretty or loving or 
just you know a refuge from from all the crap you see on the uh, out there on the media or in the world if you had a bad commute home you can come here for a minute if you had a bad day at work you could come here <clears throat> so whether it be on my facebook or my instagram or here it's just a place to have it's just a nice moment that's really all I want. And if I can give back to these little desk side chats, that's fabulous. Um, that's more than I'd hoped for. That's a whole nother level of contribution, I think, than, than I'd planned for this. So it's kind of exciting. Um, so whether it's motivation or why I do things, it's, it's really, um, can I give back? Uh, when I created DHA, I, to say I had a grand plan, I think would be lying to you, whether it be on this channel or my garage or my company or my farm. Um, that wasn't a grand plan. <clears throat> I was pulled. I was called. I was connected. And sometimes I jump before I know exactly where it's headed. But if I can feel it and I'm connected and I'm called to it, I kind of... I allow myself to be led, and, and as long as I stay connected, I think it normally ends in a pretty good place. To say I was going to create a 300-person, $40 million a year company, would be, it, it would be stupid for me to say that. Um, but I, I just followed where I was led, and, and little by little, things came together. Um, and then we, you combine that with the um, desire to punch through all obstacles, and, and you kind of end up in these places. I don't want to mislead you. Not everything works. I mean, we've tried several things at the company that didn't work. We've done several things at the farm that didn't work. And some of these videos are probably going to fall flat. Uh, and sometimes the fear of failure at the, at the tactical level maybe causes people to freeze up. You know, we call it analysis paralysis. Um, but I'm okay with failing as long as I learn from it. I just don't want to fail strategically. I don't want to fail big picture. Um, but I'm also not afraid to throw these things out there. Um, this video is an example. The, this whole line, this whole side of the channel is a great example of throwing something out there, knowing full well it could fail, it could fall flat, and I'll learn from that and move on. So be connected. Know what you want to do. Be relentless about it and drive through, around, or over the obstacles. So... The other part that you guys are asking about is how do I balance it all? And I think, I think there's a concept I would recommend you throw away, and that is life balance. I would get rid of that concept because in today's world there is no such thing. Uh, the the level of connectivity we experience, whether it be with your smartphone, your iPad, your laptop, um, just you can't get away from it. You can turn it off, and I do recommend you do that. I'm um, sometimes on vacation. You know, I'll check things in the morning, turn it off, and then come back at night and check it. And so for 10 or 12 or 14 hours, I don't even have a phone on me. And try it. I mean, it's going to feel weird, but I think becoming unplugged and, and being right here, being right here with the vlog, your, your family, your friends, whatever you're doing, be in that moment. Um, and sometimes the electronics pull us away from that. So this concept of balance, I, I would ask you to reevaluate. How do I do it? I'm pretty, um, pretty militant about my calendar. And when I advise other CEOs, what I tell them is, do you have a plan for your day? Do you have a plan for your week? And do you have a plan for like maybe the next two weeks? I mean, like, can you print it and look at it? Not, not is it in your head or did I scroll through it and take a look? But I mean, do you have a plan for today, for this week, and for the next week? And you can't jump in today and create a two-week plan. That is, you just kill yourself. But if you could get today organized, and then tomorrow, and then push your horizon further and further away from when things will need to be done, and so you get a, you get a little bit of operating space. Like yesterday, I just scheduled all my one-on-one -on -one meetings for the first quarter. So anybody I need to spend time with one-on-one, -on -one, it's on a calendar, on mine and theirs, from now through the first few days of April. And so as I leave the company to spend a couple of weeks here with my family and my garage and my tours uh, and my cars, the business side is pre-planned. We went away, we left last night knowing what the first quarter looks like. Um, 
And people think that's crazy for you to sit here and say, gosh, I got I can't plan today, much less the next three and a half months. I understand that. It has taken me years to get here. But if you could get your act together and say, what do I have to do today? And then do it. Um, what do I need to do tomorrow? And when can I do it? Um, it will help you immensely. The other thing is I have a very messy life. If you, um, if you want to think of it that way. I want to read you something. I went back and got a document out from two years ago. I didn't realize it's been two years since I worked in this thing. But I want to read you the thing that really guides me. And it was written by a guy named James Missioner. And it's at the top of my motivational stuff. And so I just want to read it to you. It says, The master in the art of living makes little distinction between his work and his play, his labor and his leisure, his mind and his body, his information and his recreation, his love and his religion. He hardly knows which is which. He simply pursues his vision of excellence at whatever he does, leaving others to decide whether he is working or playing. To him, he's always doing both. And that is what I've really spent the last two or three years trying to put into my life. I let you guys decide or my employees decide or my family decide if I'm working or playing because I can't tell anymore. Setting the garage up over the last month has been a lot of work. It doesn't really work. I've got to drive three hours to pick up my Camaro and drive back. Does that work? Not really. But my wife thinks I'm nuts. You know, hook a trailer up, drive three hours, pick up a car and three hours back in DC traffic. You know, that makes people think I'm nuts. I get it. <clears throat> working the farm, you know, fixing broken equipment, hauling the trash, um, hauling in the drinks, hauling in the carrots, um, doing the books, writing the paychecks, making the deposit. That sounds like work. I get it. But, um, but I've created this beautiful thing called Summerfield Farm from it. And so it's really not work. And so that's, that's when I'm connected to the farm, I'm connected to my company, I'm connected to my family, I'm connected to my garage, I'm really becoming connected to you guys. Um, this is not work, talking to you, sitting here talking to you, that is not work. Some would think it is, you know, setting up the structure of YouTube and the cameras and the mounts and the getting the camera angle right and um, just getting up early enough to do a vlog so you can see it before you get rolling on your day. Um, some people see that as work. I, I don't. And so I just don't know what to tell you how to get yourself motivated. I would tell you that to listen, um, and listen and feel and be quiet and be grateful and, and things will come to you. So I think one of the great secrets out there in the world is if you get organized and you get connected and you work, you work your ass off. You get crazy committed to what you want. I'll tell you, the universe does weird things behind you. And the universe will align with you. And things will happen that you you couldn't make happen. Things happen to me that there's no way I can take credit for it. That I think it's just because I'm aligned. People come to me when I need them. We win jobs we shouldn't win. Um, I find cars that I shouldn't find. Um, the garage project came together with <clears throat> fairly little effort on my part. Um, and I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you that if you get connected and you get organized and you get driven, the world will get behind you. I promise you that. And in a way, there's no way I could predict. So I'll say Merry Christmas to you. I'll say have a great Thursday. I'll come back on later today and we'll show you the bringing another car into the family and um it's gonna be a great day hope it is for you too i love you guys i love this channel i love what's happening where's it going wow, i got no clue but i like where it's headed so good morning everybody and we'll talk to you later